In this tutorial, we are going to talk about dynamic blocks in JSTOR-CAD. Here is a dynamic block reference of a door that can be flipped by clicking these grips. So in this part, I will show you how to create a dynamic block with flip parameter. Double click this block and click OK to open the block editor. Let's delete the parameters and actions first. Now we can start introducing how to add flip parameter and action to the block. Here is a parameter set panel, which already combines the parameter and action together. Let's select the flip set, specify the base point of the reflection line, enable auto mode, then specify the end point of the reflection line, and place the label here. Notice that there is an exclamation mark next to the action symbol, which means the action settings are not finished. Since dynamic blocks only work properly after setting the action, we need to double-click this mark, select objects, and press enter. OK, then I will add a flip parameter and an action to the block separately. First, select the flip parameter in the ribbon parameters panel. Specify the base point of the reflection line and the end point of the reflection line. Put the parameter label here. Add one grip. Enter. Then select the flip action in the ribbon action panel. Click the parameter and select the objects. Press enter and place the action label. OK, let's close the block editor. Yes, in the current drawing, let's click Insert Command in the ribbon, select the door block. You will notice there is a little mark in the corner. It's a symbol of the dynamic block. You can see this one doesn't have. Let's select back and click OK. Place the dynamic block here. Then we can flip it by clicking groups that are associated with the parameters we added. In this part, let's create a dynamic block that can be stretched. First, click Create Block command in the ribbon, type a name for the block, click Pick Point button to pick insertion base point in the current drawing, then click Select Objects button and select the multi-line object. Enter. Click OK. So the multi-line object now is converted to a block. Next, double-click this block and click OK to open the block editor. Then select the liner stretch parameter pair in the ribbon to add stretch parameter and action to the block. Enable object snap and click on this point as a start point for a distance. Then specify the end point for the distance. Put the label here. OK. Notice that there is an exclamation mark next to the action symbol which means the action settings are not finished. So we need to set the action now. As I want the window can be stretched from both sides, I'm going to double click this mark on the left. Specify the stretch frame, which is the area that we can stretch. And select the object. Press enter. And then double click the mark on the right. Specify the stretch frame again. And select the object. Enter. OK, let's close the block editor. Yes. You can see the window can be stretched from both sides. In this part, we will talk about creating a dynamic block that can be aligned along a line when inserted. First, let's convert these objects to a block. Click Create Block command in the ribbon, tap a name for the block, Click Pick Point button to pick insertion base point in the current drawing. Then click Select Object button and select objects. Enter. OK, next double click this block and click OK to open the block editor. Select the alignment parameter in the ribbon parameters panel. I'm going to enable Object Track, Polo Track and right click the Object Snap icon to check Midpoint option. Then move the cursor along this line, find the midpoint of the line. Don't click on it, just move the cursor upper, 
a green dash line appears, and then snap the crosser to this point. Move to the left, click on the point where these two dash lines intersect as the base point of alignment, and specify the alignment direction. OK, let's close block editor. Yes. Now select the handrail dynamic block and click the alignment grip. You can see when I move the crosser to lines, it will automatically align to them. In this part, we are going to introduce how to create a dynamic block that can be rotated. For example, let's add a rotation parameter and action to this block. Double click the block and click OK to open the block editor. And then select the rotation set in the ribbon parameter sets panel. Specify the start point and specify the radius of parameter. After setting the default angle as 180 degrees, the position of the parameter grip is confirmed here. Then put the label here. Notice that there is an exclamation mark next to the action symbol, which means the action settings are not finished. So we need to double click this mark, select objects, and press enter. Next, let's add a rotation parameter and an action to the block separately. Select the rotation parameter in the ribbon parameters panel, specify the start point, specify the radius of parameter, set the default angle as zero. The position of the parameter grip is confirmed. OK, put the label here and add one grip. Enter. Then select the rotation action in the ribbon action panel. Click the parameter and select the objects. Press enter and put the label here. OK, close the block editor. Yes. You can see in the current drawing, when I select this dynamic block, there are two parameter grips on it. Click any one of them, move the crosser, click, and the block is rotated easily. In this part, let's talk about creating a dynamic block that can be adjusted to the visibility. For example, select this dynamic block and click the parameter grip. A list appears. Select any one of them. You can see the block displays differently. I'm going to double click this dynamic block and click OK to open the block editor. Delete the parameter. And then let's figure out how to set the visibility of a dynamic block. Select the visibility set in the ribbon parameter sets panel and specify the location of the parameter. You will notice that there is an exclamation mark next to the action symbol, which means the visibility states setting are not finished. So let's double click this mark. The visibility state dialog box pops up. Rename this state as table one. Okay. Next, click visibility state command in the ribbon. Create a new state, name it as table two, and select show all existing objects in the new state option. OK. Click Make Invisible command in the ribbon visibility panel. Window select the objects, press Enter, and select Current to hide for current state. Next, click Visibility state command in the ribbon again, create a new state, and name it as Table 3. OK. As I selected, Show all existing objects in new state option when I created last state. You can see all the objects are visible in table 3 state. Then click again and make invisible command in the ribbon. Select objects. Press enter and select current to hide for current state. OK, close the block editor. Yes. Now we can adjust the visibility of a dynamic block easily.